Hi, it's Friday, May 19th. I have not talked to you all in a while. Last time I made a video, I mentioned that I was going to be doing a sermon at my Unitarian church and that I would be posting sort of the backup video being made in case I was not well enough to be there in person that day. But what happened is I made the backup video and then I actually edited a little more. Also, I was really tired making the backup video after two or three takes and it was, you know, 15 minutes plus. It was a little long actually um, at that point and it was dragging and I am not going to post it. But I will put a link in the description of this video for the whole service um, where you can find the, the sermon if you really want to see it. Um, so you can still see it you can see the real deal, which I think is better anyway. And, uh, I felt really grateful to have the opportunity to do that. I talked, um, about my CAA diagnosis from the perspective of what has changed for me, but also how I was able to draw upon a lot of my uh, sort of lifelong learning and spiritual practice and just support systems um, and not fall apart and keep everything. Uh, I was, I'm still me. That's, that's kind of the gist of it. I'm really, really proud of it. So uh, I hope you will take a listen. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about today is actually singing. Something else I have mentioned in the past is that I would post some singing videos occasionally. So what happened was um, the last time I post a video singing, uh, I, I had done it for a little while, like I had practiced the day before, or not even practiced, just was singing. Um, and that day I practiced it before I made the, the recording. And what happened was I realized after I had done that, that it was making me dizzy, which is just a, a, a an oversimplified description of the reaction in my head uh, to, I think, the pressure of singing <laughs> in terms of uh, resonance and maybe, maybe even sort of increased blood flow um, but you know, I'm a belter and, um, it, it just creates some kind of pressure up there and, um, it made me dizzy in a way, woozy or whatever, uh, that lasted like two, three days or so. It gradually dissipated and it kind of made me think maybe I can't actually sing anymore. And that really sucks. And I'm still working it out. I'm trying to figure out if that's true. Uh, it kind of seems like it, but I don't, I guess I'm still in denial and whatever. So I wanted to talk about singing, uh, cause that's been a huge part of my life and this is going to be pretty vulnerable. So thanks for sticking with me. So I was raised by a music educator. My mom taught music, um, my whole life growing up retired from uh, teaching public school, all grade levels, um, then went on to teach college uh, for a few years as well. So I grew up around around music and um, there's, you know, music in my dad's family too and it's just always everywhere. I was exposed to um, classical, heavily instrumental, vocal, opera, um, and I have a sister who is an opera singer in Germany, and so is her husband. Um, so we're kind of like, we're, it's not opposite at all, but complementary, where I'm the rocker and she's the opera singer, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so um, I was exposed to jazz. I was brought to the Eastman Theater here, um, and, you know, got to see a lot of musical theater. I did a lot of musical theater um, as sort of a preteen, teenager, young adult. And 
what happened was I, like I've said, I was, I think always kind of a rock and roller. That wasn't something that my family did. Um, mom was a vocalist, uh, sang operatically always. And I also, my voice did not develop young. My sister's voice developed young. Everyone could see her talent, her, her brilliance very early on. And I took quite a while. There was also a stigma um, in the works, and there's not a person that this came from. It was just um, a stigma around belting and using one's voice in a really powerful way that I struggled with that ended up being a psychological barrier, really, more than anything. So growing up, young when I was younger, I had some voice lessons occasionally, not a whole lot. Um, nobody knew how to teach me how to sing the way I wanted to sing. I, I don't even real think I realized that that was really what I wanted to do. Um, but it was always there and um, I, I was scared. I was, I was always hearing about people who would ruin their voices from belching. They would, you know, maybe be very young and have really impressive big voices, but the idea was, was that perhaps they were using their voices in a way that was harmful to them physically and that they were doing damage or could be doing damage that would be permanent. And so they would have this great experience and get a lot of attention when they were younger and showing a lot of talent. And then later on, they wouldn't have a voice. And I, looking back now, there's nobody that I can think of who was, you know, a, a peer of mine who was super talented, doing brilliant, um, powerful musical theater singing is usually what it was, uh, who that happened to, but nobody knew how to work with me in terms of that. And I was not getting it naturally. There are people who can understand, and I don't know if it's, um, something that where they hear it and they imitate it and they figure it out or what, but there's people who can naturally sing in this very powerful belt um and everyone benefits from training for sure it definitely is valuable to learn how to produce sounds that are fuller in a healthier way but um in any case i i grew up around um more classical singing and by the way it was called legit singing when you were singing in a classical head voice. That was legit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but belting was uh, scary. And then there would be these conflicting messages where there'd be certain people who were really good at it and no one seemed, it, you know, and these people who I would hear this from, no one seemed to think they were, you know, um, doing anything they shouldn't be doing. So it was weird. And I also want to just side note, I think that a lot of this was a systemic prejudice that came from racism and classism, because when you look historically at music from different regions and different populations, um, classical singing was a very upper class European modality um, and powerful um, belting and I'm talking specifically about women, but not only, um, was something that was coming from, you know, African Americans and also, uh, let's even look at like bluegrass, uh, and people who maybe came from Ireland, but lower classes, quote unquote. So interesting footnote, something to think about, something I want to learn more about. I want to know if anyone's done any research on that. Anyway, so what happened was um, I, I majored in theater in college. 
uh, intending to be a straight actor, meaning not musical theater, but you know, plays, movies, TV, not, not singing, uh, because it was so competitive and it was just nerve wracking. And as much as I liked doing it, um, I never felt that I was at all good enough to, to pursue uh, musical theater where everything is really, really um, specific and exacting uh, and not something that I was naturally, you know, good at. So um, I did not sing much at all. I did a little theater, but from early 20s until my mid 30s, and at First Unitarian Church, um, there was just stuff people were doing, and I got um, kind of pulled into some artistic musical stuff they were doing, and I got involved um, over, it took a couple years for this to evolve, uh, I got involved with the rock band and I had been back to taking voice lessons, had a couple different teachers and I found a couple of teachers who actually knew, who actually had their way of teaching help me get to where I um, just was inclined to be with singing rock and roll and like folk rock and you know, Brandi Carlisle being my number one inspiration among many. Um, and, you know, I had also been my getting older, my my voice was um, was changing and getting stronger. Uh, and I was figuring things out on my own in combination with these teachers who were helping me figure out the specifics of really how to make it work and how to let that out. And then it took three or four more years of singing with this band all the time, like all the time, every week. Um, and till I actually felt confident, I before then had a relationship with singing and music that was so complicated. I um, loved doing it, but I had a an experience where every time I was going to get up in front of anyone, even sometimes at rehearsal, but in front of an audience, um, I had this irrational fear in the back of my mind that I wouldn't know how, that I wouldn't be good, that I couldn't, this time it just wouldn't work. <laughs> Maybe I, you know, that I'd been lucky until now and it was just not gonna work. Um, and I had to sing for several years before that stopped being in the back of my mind. So you would have this dynamic where it gave me great joy and I loved working with my bandmates and I loved being a part of the First Unitarian community and serving in, in the ways that I could there and we also we were gigging and doing other things, you know, we were getting out, doing, we were doing covers. We were really a cover band. The music at the church was, um, that we were doing was mostly secular covers that fit with the themes that we were involved with, um, at the time. Um, but it really, uh, you know, it was, I've always wanted to say it's a real rock band. It wasn't, um, kind of what you think of when you think of a church band traditionally and say like an evangelical uh, tradition or something. So, um, so it was really, it was really difficult. I think I was harder to work with, I'm sure. I don't think it's ever terrible to work with, but I think that when you're insecure um, with what you're doing, I know I got like a little tight and um, picky, uh, in an effort to get things to be more comfortable and to feel more confident. And then over time, um, there was just so much growth and I, uh, it, for all of us and I, um, the band really became a family and I love them very much. Um, and I had to leave when I got sick cause I already knew there was no way that, um, I could do that regularly. I did did not and do not have the stamina 
uh, or the predictable feeling of, of any sort of, you know, level of health to commit to processes of rehearsal and showing up and, um, you know, practicing and then doing a service of several songs and there was just no no way I could commit to that but I was thinking I could still sing occasionally maybe and we've talked about it and um, with the new uh, discovery of singing um, giving me that woozy feeling uh, I just think it's it's not likely to work. And, and what sucks is that there's a feeling that I get from singing when, you know, as I evolved and was able to own my voice and find a power that I longed for and didn't know I had access to. And once I found it, it took me a while to have confidence in that, in that ability and that access. I had, I've had this experience of incredible connection because um, when I was able to sing in this powerful way, it was as though everything resonated through everyone. And that is true of music in general, but there was just, there were so many moments where I was having to hold back tears because I was producing an energy that it took me so long to access and that I f could feel was able to impact people and move through people. Um, and, and you just, it feels like an, an energy field in, in this big room among this crowd of people. And, and you, you know, when you're drawing on really brilliant songwriting from so many amazing artists, um, I, I just, some of my most emotional experiences have been around that, um, and it took so long to get there and it took so much practice and risk taking and um, mistakes and working on trust of myself and the, everyone I worked with and in my community. It took, it took, it was such a long road and then it was it seems like it was so short. The band was together for 12 years, not always the same members. Um, the last, you know, few years were mostly the same people, but um, 12 years. Hmm. And then it just ended. Um, and the, the funny thing is, I was working with a couple of the band members on a new project we were just starting to uh, put together around uh, Americana and folk rock and rock uh, that was gonna be not at church at all and we wanted to build something that was um, new and focused primarily on female artists like Brandi Carlisle and little Bonnie Raitt and um, Little Chrissy Hines and um, Gillian Welch and uh, so many, so many others. And it really sucks that I don't know that I can ever have that again. Um, so I want to say a few things, and I didn't think about this too much in advance, but when you are out anywhere, whether you're at a place of worship or a, a local uh, bar where there's a band or a huge concert or musical theater or a kids concert at school. Remember the bit about that resonance flowing through everyone that is there 
and how that connects people and how much vulnerability it takes for a person, whether they're part of a group or they're a soloist, whether they're very rehearsed or they're improvising, um, how much it takes for somebody to do that and how much um, energy is involved in input and in output and in receiving. And try to take a moment to let that in and be present to that and be grateful that we have music that is created by the human body in every cell of a person's body through singing that resonance just comes alive and it is an ancient ancient universally human tradition i am beyond I'm, I'm astounded that I was able to take part in what I did in, in what is really a relatively small environment, um, but I'm really proud of it. I, I worked with my husband, who's the lead guitar player, brilliant. Um, my daughter sang with us occasionally, and I love so many people that I wouldn't have known without being a part of that. And I'm going to miss it so much. But I got to do it. And if you're watching and you've been a part of that with me or you've been in the room when I was singing up in front, thank you. Thank you so much for... For being present and helping me find that part of myself and share it and if you like to sing sing screw everybody else just do it and keep doing it and don't let anybody shut you up